welcome to the New Heights Show on Education. This is your host, Pamela Clark, and you're listening to Education in the News. So welcome back, and as normal, we're going to get right into it because there's a lot to cover. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. The first story I have for you was reported by KGW-TV of Portland, Oregon. It was titled, Horticulture Program Teaches Students Work Skills. Students with disabilities are learning to grow and care for plants at a greenhouse owned by Reynolds School District in Oregon. The greenhouses are part of a three-year community transition program designed to provide students with work and life skills to help them succeed in adult life. And in Phoenix, Arizona, KNXV-TV reports that Penguin offers lessons for children with disabilities. A group of children with developmental disabilities such as cerebral palsy and autism met a small African penguin named Rosie at Odyssey Aquarium in Scottsdale, Arizona. The penguin, which also overcomes some skeletal abnormalities, helps to give inspiration and lessons about resilience to children. Just a moment. Switching between stories. Okay, uh, this is from the Heckinger Report. And it's a study that shows the Tennessee public pre-K program harms outcomes. A public pre-kindergarten program in Tennessee led to worse outcomes for students, according to a multi-year study of 2,990 children. Findings show that the students who had enrolled in the state-funded program had lower academic achievement and more disciplinary issues and more special education referrals by sixth grade than their peers. Wow. (laughs) What do you think of that? And then from uh, News Medical reports that youths with CP may benefit from genetic diagnosis. Research found that children with no known cerebral palsy risk factors or who have CP like features but experience deterioration of their condition over time may have underlying genetic conditions. According to a study published in the Annals of Clinical and Translational Neurology, the study found that as many as one in four children had an underlying genetic condition that would potentially change the overall approach to the child care, to the child's care. And then this one... Uh, this is from District Administration. Let me get your website. It is uh, www.districtadministration.com. It's titled CTOs, COVID-19 Changed Rules in Schools. School District Chief Technology Officers at Future of Education Technology Conference says their role has changed during the coronavirus pandemic, largely for the better. Elin, or Eileen, excuse me, Bielostock, Director of Technologies and Information for COSN, says one key change has been the shift in how schools, technology, and staff are viewed, going from IT people to having a seat at the table. And um, let's see, in in New York City, this is from New York One reported this, New York City schools to shift shorter quarantine periods. New York City schools, public schools, soon will reduce the number of days students must set at home after testing positive for the coronavirus to six days from 10 days. 
if they have been free of fever for 24 hours. The change implements recommended recommendations from the CDC. An Education Week reports that school leaders asked to extend spending deadline. A coalition of school, health, and environmental advocacy groups is asking the U.S. Department of Education to extend the deadline to December 2026 and September 2024 to spend federal coronavirus relief funds for construction and capital improvement projects. At issue, they say, is that the schools are competing for limited supplies of contractors and materials, which is driving up prices and leading to delays. And Working Nation in Los Angeles reports that Olympian Lediki connects swimming with STEM. Swimmer and Olymp Olympic gold medalist Katie Lede Ledecky, sorry if I'm saying her name wrong, explains how STEM figures into her swimming competitions at the face of the STEM Forward Educational Initiative, says Alejandra Sija of Panasonic North America, which is partnering with Ledecky and Discovery Education. The program, which has tools for teachers and activities for students and families, works especially to inspire students of color and illustrations, how certifications or two or four year degrees can lead to STEM careers. Just a moment while I switch. And between stories here. Okay. This is from the Foundation Center. It says Mott Foundation commits $25 million to improve public health in Flint. The largest single grant in the history of the College of Human Medicine at Michigan State University will create an endowment to fund additional public health facility, including uh, to increase academic research and bolster community health collaborations. And New Schools Venture Fund receives $35 million gift from Mackenzie Scott. I, think I mentioned this one um, on a previous show, but um, it's a repeat. Part of the tranche of gifts that Scott awarded in December that is the single largest contribution to new schools will enable the organization to continue to provide unrestricted capital in support of educators and innovators who are reimagining learning in the United States. Just a moment. Let's see. I apologize. We always have this this delay, but again, there's a lot of stories, a lot of repeats, and um, they, I usually, if if I know they're a repeat before the show, I can delete them out. But sometimes they come in news articles that maybe there's five to ten new news articles in a publication and there's other important news so I can't get rid of certain things so that's what kind of causes the delay here is something from Ohio Ed Update just for state and local education news and it says <clears throat> this is from the New Work Advocate girls Girls Who Code revived at Lakewood as an Intel project looms on the horizon. Lakewood Local Schools has revived a new club called Girls Who Code, which encourages younger girls to go into IT and computer programming. It is based on the nonprofit organization of the same name that is based in New York City, which aims to support and increase the number of women in computer science 
and close the gender gap in technology. And Zanesville Time Recorder reports that Aces of Trades, even as a child, Alyssa Amsball, Paul, Amspaul, always wanted to be a teacher. It's something she's known for a long time. She wanted to be a teacher as a child, related Alyssa Amspaul. I love playing school and teaching all of my baby dolls. For Christmas, I would ask Santa for a teacher bag and books to be able to teach my students. I had high-heeled boots that clicked and were and were my teacher shoes. I was meant to be an educator. Today, Ams Paul is an assistant principal at Zane Gray Intermediate and Elementary School. It's interesting. I used to do the same thing. I line up all my stuffies and and dolls and um, teach them whatever I learned in school before getting home. <laughs> okay, so here's something from Warren Tribune Chronicle. It's titled Combating the Decline of Play. Cardboard boxes, board games, cards, and crafts covered floors and tables at Lakewood, or I'm sorry, Lakeview Elementary School Wednesday as students let loose and spent the day playing. While it meant having, while it may have been all fun and games, school principal Scott Taylor said Lakeview Elementary's participation in Global School Play Day was meant to highlight the importance of unstructured, unstructured play. Students were asked to bring in a toy or game to share. No electronic devices were permitted and were given time to play freely under the supervision of teachers. I think they call that Montessori. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Um, next story I have for you is from Nebraska, Kearney Hub reported that Nebraska students learn about antique cars on 100th day. Students in Kearney, Nebraska, explored a 1922 Vili during their 100th day of school celebrations. The antique car's owner, the father of one of the school teachers, taught students about the 100-year-old vehicle and its history before allowing them to climb in, check out the windowless doors, and honk the horn. And in Tulsa, Oklahoma, KOTV-TV reported that earthquake adds to fourth grade lessons on te tectonic plates. Fourth graders in Oklahoma elementary school were recently learning about the tectonic plates, fault lines, and earthquakes when the classroom started to shake. It was a first-time earthquake experience for some students and caused no damage. But teacher Gina Meyer said the quake hap happening during the lesson was, quote, that beautiful organic moment in teaching. <laughs> I bet it was. Wow, right? And Ed Surge reports that more, more schools adopt mental health days. More schools districts are adding mental health days into their calendars. With 65 district-wide mental health closures reported by Burbio, a firm that tracks school schedules, officials say the closures are tied in some cases to staffing shortages, but also are aimed at supporting mental health and preventing burnout among students and staff. And the next story I have for you is from Willing, West Virginia. The Intelligencer Willing News Register reported that CTE students share experience with middle schoolers. Career and technical education students at West Virginia High School recently met with middle schoolers, schoolers dang, to tell them about career pathway programs available to them. The high school offers 20 programs, including 15 simulated workplace companies. Back in Ohio, let's see. Oh, no, we already read that one last time. Hold on. Yeah. Um, okay, just 
moment. Gonna switch over here again. This is from the Foundation Center. And the study finds significant connection between poverty and poor health care. The report from Robin Hood found that more than 2 million New Yorkers have high health care needs and are more likely to live in poverty. And that high health care meds are correlated with levels of educational attainment. I could have told them that. Okay, um, and Harvard Graduate School of Education receives $40 million gift. The largest single gift in the school's history was made by two Harvard Business School alumni who prefer to remain anonymous and will support endowed scholarships and bolstering financial aid for teachers. And then, let's see, where's this one from? This is uh, from Yeshiva University. They received $20 million for building renovation. In addition to funding from Jack Belts and his family to renovate classrooms and, and, and administrative spaces in First Hall and modernize the interior and exterior of the building, the gift includes a large portion of Judah Kaya and artwork that Jack and his late wife Marilyn collected. Back in Ohio, Ohio at Ohio Ed Updates and State and Local Education News, the Cincinnati Inquirer reports that Middletown schools kick off opt-in COVID-19 testing that started on February 7th. And it says a free optional COVID-19 testing program for students began the week of February 7th in all Middletown schools. Quote, when we surveyed all staff our staff and families earlier this month, we found that the majority of both groups were interested in optional testing in the schools, said Superintendent Myron Stiles. Screening for both sim symptomatic and asymptomatic individuals is available for students who will be given rapid tests and ministered by school nurses. And Mackenzie Scott donation sends $2 million to local dropout prevention organization. The Columbus Dispatch reported that the Columbus-based affiliate of Community and Schools, a national student dropout prevention nonprofit, will receive $2 million through a larger donation from billionaire th philanthropist Mackenzie Scott. Scott ex-wife of former Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos donated $133.5 million to Communities and Schools Network and National Office, according to the news release Thursday. Also, the Columbus Dispatch also recorded that Reynoldsburg Elementary School received grants to expand STEM experiences. The Reynoldsburg Elementary School is receiving three grants totaling $12,500 from Ohio STEM Learning Network to expand STEM experiences at the district's elementary schools. Summit Road and Taylor Road each will receive $5,000 and Herbert Mills will receive $2,500. These awards are part of a $600 or I'm sorry, $687,500 in grants awarded to 133 schools across 55 Ohio counties. According to Rob Evans, communications manager of Battelle Education, which manages the Ohio STEM Learning Network in partnership with the Ohio Department of Education. Columbus Dispatch also reports that Pickerington Schools launched program to build reading skills for third graders. Pickerington Schools has launched Morning Level Up Academy, a program designed to move third graders from basic reading skills to proficiency in reading through Voluntary Academy. 
third graders who have been put on a reading improvement monitoring plan, also known as RIMPS, are invited to receive extra reading instruction from 8 to 9 a.m. Tuesday and Thursday through March 31st. The program started February 1st and is free for students. Port Clinton News Herald reports that GLCAP may seek grants for after-school programs. The Great Lakes Community Action Partnership, GLCAP board, will meet at 6.30 p.m. Tuesday for its monthly meeting. On the agenda is seeking an, an Ohio Department of Education grant for up to $1 million for an after-school program at Clyde Green Springs Schools and $1.6 million for Fremont City Schools from April 1, 2022 through September 30, 2024. The GLC cap would provide an after-school program to decrease the academic impact of lost instruction time due to the pandemic and increase student social and emotional strength, plus provide a safe environment for children while their parents are at work. Bell Fountain Examiner reports that Ohio High Point celebrates National Career Technical Education Month. Students and staff at Ohio High Point Career Center will join others across the nation during the month of February to celebrate Career and Technical Education Month. Career and Education provides an education that is focused on hands-on learning and a specific career pathway for students to be college and career ready. Career Education has a dynamic impact on economic development and students enter the workforce with skills necessary to succeed and be productive citizens in the community. Cleveland.com reports that Fairview Park City Schools seeks professionals to speak with students at career night. Pre-pandemic, one of the most exciting and influential evenings related to career development of Fairview Park City Schools students was the annual career night. While the last two events were canceled due to COVID-19, the career showcase targeted middle and high school student returns March 24th at the Fairview High School Gym. The casual open house style event finds professionals stationed at tables sharing information about their careers while answering student questions. And Warren Trump Tribune Chronicles reports that robotic competitors take to playing field. Robotics competitors from Tri-County area squeezed in a competition Wednesday evening at the Mahoning County Career and Technical Center before the weather got wicked and closed schools on Thursdays. Final local rounds are February 17th, which will determine which Six teams moved to elimination tournaments. Three top teams teams then moved to the state competition March 12th in Marion, Ohio. A world final competition is held in Texas in April. Looking through here, just a moment. Okay, this story is from Charlotte, North Carolina. WFAEFM reports North Carolina's district Spanish-speaking families face challenges. A lack of Spanish-speaking school staff in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools in North Carolina is causing some parents to struggle to support their students, where less than 20% are considered on track in math and reading. Superintendent Ernest Winston has said the school system's greatest challenge is addressing the dropping math and reading scores of the district's 40,000 students who were classified as Hispanic, the fastest growing demographic in the district.
Oh, we're going to have to take a quick commercial break, but we will be right back. Right now, you might be struggling through your classes or even failing them. You might be worried that you may not finish high school. There might have even been a thought that you may not be smart enough. Well, the New Heights Educational Group begs to differ. We not only think you are smart enough, but with our help, you will complete your high school diploma. The New Heights Educational Group strives to improve your academic success through its tutoring services. To learn more, please visit newheightseducation.org and contact us. New Heights Educational Group, educational resources to help reach your goals. Welcome back to the New Heights Show on Education. You're listening to Education in the News. And I'm your host, Pamela Clark. Uh, the next story I have for you is from the Colorado Sun in Denver. Middle schoolers test innovative face masks. Students at a middle school in Colorado are testing the use of masks outfitted with stripes created on a 3D printer. They are intended to display if the person wearing the mask is exhaling exhaling coronavirus. Officials say the test program, open to students whose families opt in, has helped to identify asymptomatic causes of the virus. You believe that? Wow. (laughs) Well, somebody's thinking, right? Somebody's thinking. Okay, so the next story I have for you is from Cleveland. WEWS-TV reported that Ohio Middle School's clubs encourages inclusive and kindness. The, in quotations, Be That Person Club at Harding Middle School and Lakewood, Ohio, promotes inclusion of all students through projects such as creating decorative displays and kindness initiatives. Eighth grade student C.C. Wittemeyer says the changes affected by the club can potentially strengthen the community as a whole. And in Phoenix, KPNX-TV reported that Arizona teacher uses Marathon to help motivate students. Shauna Murray, a sixth grade teacher at an Arizona elementary school, is training to compete in her first marathon with some participating students training to compete or to complete the one to three mile portions of the Mesa Marathon later this month. Murray, who has a fundraising page to supply students with running shoes, says the race is intended to help booster or boost students' motivation and show them that they can overcome obstacles as they run and encourage her to cross the finish line. The next story is from Cambridge, Minnesota, and it is from Isanta Chisago County Star. Sorry if I butchered that. It's titled, Tech Helps Students Identify and Cope with Stress. Students in Minnesota District are learning to recognize the physiological signs of stress and use of self-soothing techniques in a special program funded in part by the Grandy Lions Club. Visual data from where... A, from wearable heart rate monitors help students identify moments of stress, anxiety, and anger, says, so, says school social worker Janelle Clems. And students are learning breathing techniques and other methods to help cope with those moments. Okay, I think this other one I've shared before. Just a moment as I go through some of these. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Okay. Uh, USA Today reported that D.C. University supports black students who are deaf. The Center for Black Deaf Students at Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C., offers an inclusive, culturally supportive learning environment for black students who are deaf. We, quote, we collectively have the opportunity to commemorate and celebrate this courageous spirit, says Deaf Studies professor Carolyn McCaskill, 
the center's founding director. Okay, just a moment. This is from the Foundation Center. It says, University of Michigan Museum of Art receives Chinese calligraphy gift. The Lo Chao Lun calligraphy collection donated by Lo Chao Lun's daughter, Ji Feng Lao Chong, and her husband, Q Xing Zhang, sorry if I butchered those, will contribute significantly to contemporary scholarship on Yang and Ming Dynasty calligraphy. And Helmsley Trust awards nearly $2.2 million for rehabilitation research. The grant to ALYN Hospital in Jerusalem, the only pediatric and adolescent rehabilitation facility in Israel, will create a research center focused on cognitive, orthopedic, and neurological rehabilitation remote rehabilitation and mobility. More from the Foundation Center. Novartis commits $20 million to Third Good Marshall College Fund with the goal of reducing financial barriers to a college education and equipping the next generation of leaders in, he in health, business, and social equity related fields, the 10-year commitment from Novartis will provide scholarships of up to $10,000 a year at 26 HBCUs and medical schools, as well as faculty research grants of 25 grand. And Duke Law receives $2.5 million for Criminal Defense Clinic. The commitment from the Barton Family Foundation will help train students to be leaders in ending mass incarceration and racial injustice and provide students with hands-on experimental learning course in the practice of criminal representation. Well, with that being said, I kind of... Um, a little bit of a, a background that I, I had been trying to actually make an impact for those that are, um, you know, inmates. And I'd been trying to put a program together for years to, to help um, inmates and their families. And I actually had called um, CCNO in Northwest Ohio years ago. It's been a number of years ago and asked you know, what, what would you need and what would be the criteria kind of thing for it? And they said, well, it would have to be free. So we did, we built up stuff. And I, I'll tell you, I emailed every, I wrote a letter and I emailed every um, prison official in Ohio. And I think some out of the state as well, didn't receive one reply back. Then I started to make some phone calls, and it took quite a few phone calls um, to find out that all of the, the courses that are being taught internally at, at uh, prisons right now are all through the public school system, which, ironically enough, are the ones that failed these, these families to begin with. And it's really very difficult to kind of break into that in the sense of sharing knowledge in a different way. And helping these people that really need help. And instead they're stuck with kind of the, what's normal. But, you know, not the, you know, why, why are they in there? I mean, a lot of these people had a background of illiteracy. And the schools had already given up on them. And then they get stuck in prison. And then they still are stuck in the same system. And I have tried, I don't know if any of you know anyone that may be interested in some of our award-winning programming, but I've tried, I know it could, it's, I know it's better than anything that they have, but to help those individuals 
that are in prison, <laughs> telling you, they make it almost impossible for anyone that thinks a little differently or that has a different way of teaching, proven ways of teaching, um, to provide assistance. I mean, I can't tell you how many phone numbers I called and it just pretty much went into a dead end. So pretty aggravating. It makes you really think, well, it's really not about helping them. Just like it's really not about helping the students in public school. I mean, yes, teachers work really hard and they do the best they can, but schools and education is not the same thing. So, and I've said that many, many times. Um, all right, let's get back to it. I just wanted to share that because I tried myself to break into that niche and, and provide services and it's very hard, very difficult. So this is also from the Foundation Center. It says Rosenberg Foundation announces 2022 cohort of leading edge fellows. Fellows will receive $250,000 in general support over three years, as well as individualized technical assistance and program development, fundraising, and strategic communications, executive coaching, and trainings and retreats. And communities and schools receive $133.5 million from Mackenzie Scott. And we read about that earlier, actually. But, um, so I'm not going to reread it, but. All right, just a moment. This is from Ohio Ed Update, State and Local News. Columbus, W-O-S-U-N-P-R, reports that more Ohio K-12 schools could soon benefit because of philanthropic donation. A $133 million donation is going to a program that links at-risk students with community services they need in order to be academically successful. The Communities and Schools program already helped 21,873 students in 34 K-12 schools throughout Ohio, and more will likely benefit. Philanthropist Mackenzie Scott's donation to the National Communities and Schools program will mean more schools with low-income students can participate. And the Lorraine Morning Journal reports that Lorraine County students receive honors at Scholastic Arts Award Ceremony. Lorraine County students received accolades in Regional Art Exhibi Exhibition. The 2022 Lorraine County Regional Scholastic Art Exhibition Gold Key Program took place February the 6th at Stalker Arts Center. 50 local students received first place Gold Key distinctions during the 2022 Student Awards. Following the ceremony, the gallery was open from 1 to 4. Okay, and in Salem News, um, Salem Crestview finished 1-2 in Academic Challenge. The Columbiana County Varsity Academic Challenge Tournament, coordinated by the Columbiana County Educational Service Center was held January 22nd at the Salem City High School. Eight schools competed in the tournament. The reigning champions from the Salem City School District once again took first place. The CCESC will sponsor them to represent Columbiana County and Regional Ohio Academic Competition at Copley High School in Akron on April the 9th. Need to take another quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Hello, okay. listeners. If you're enjoying the New Heights show on education and want to support or donate to our organization, please visit www.newheightseducation.org. And while you're there, check out our online store. Welcome back to the New Heights Show on Education. 
You're listening to Education in the News. The next story we have for you is from the Washington Post. It's also covered by the Associated Press, CNN, and Politico magazine. The Biden administration tightened school nutrition rules. Joe Biden's administration will seek to reinstate some nutrition guidelines for school meals that were relaxed during relaxed or supposedly relaxed during Donald Trump's presidency. The move would require the schools offer low and non-fat unflavored milks and include new rules for whole grain offerings and sodium levels. That just shows they know absolutely nothing about nutrition. Fat in milk is not bad. Anybody that want to, wants to learn more about nutrition, you, you, you know, have no relationship with them other than being a fan, look into Flav City. But just, it's all about control, people. All about controlling people. Wow. Okay. Then the National Public Radio reports bills to limit instruction create minefield. Teachers increasingly face a minefield of rules and regulation when trying to teach about issues such as slavery, Jim Crow laws, or the Holocaust, asserts Jeffrey Sachs, a researcher for PEN America who tracks legislation that would restrict teaching about race, politics, American history, gender identity, and sexual orientation. Sachs says data shows that 35 states have introduced 137 such bills. I'm not even going to remark on that. Chalk beat in Colorado. Colorado considers tuition waivers for foster use. Colorado lawmakers are considering a bill that would eliminate college tuition and fees for students who have been in foster care past age 13. About 4,500 students would be eligible for free tuition under the bill's provisions, and the cost to the state would be around $694,000, according to a state analysis. Just a moment while I switch again. This is from Smart Brief on education, and it says district focuses on asking what if and why and why not, using a multi-tiered system of supports, offering before and after school academic enrichment opportunities, and asking what if and why not to encourage innovation have helped Arcadia Unified School District in California address learning recovery consistency. Consistency for Students. Superintendent David Vanisdell writes, Vanisdell explains three other ways the district has made the most of its resources. And Education Report, or Education Week reports that educators say pay raises are preferred over bonuses. Some teachers are being offered bonuses funded by federal coronavirus relief money, but say, some say they, the move feels like an overthought instead of some education advocacy organizations suggest school districts invest in higher pay for teachers, with Matt Yaunt, a teacher in Florida, saying that while he plans to cash his bonus, he would prefer a sustainable pay raise. An Arkansas Democratic Gazette in Little Rock reported that Arkansas tightens diploma path for students with special needs. A change to Arkansas's graduation requirements starts next school year, and it means that students in special education no longer will be allowed to graduate based on completing the requirements of an IEP, or an Individualized Education Program. And only students with the most severe cognitive disabilities will be able to use an alternative education pathway to receive a diploma. The move is mandated under federal law, says Matt Sewell. 
Special Education Division Manager for the Arkansas Division of Elementary and Secondary Schools. More about control again, people. Okay, let me go through some of these. Some of these are repeats again. Yep, all repeats on that one. Okay. Bear with me. All right, so this is from the Foundation Center. And it says, Case Western Reserve receives $20 million for Leadership Institute. The commitment will support up to eight undergraduates per year with at least full tuition scholarships and programming that includes academic and practical experiences. And Lilly commits $14.1 million to UNICEF Child Health Care. The four-year commitment will support UNICEF's work in Bangladesh, Malawi, in Nepal, the Philippines, and Zimbabwe. And, uh, okay, that was all of that. This is more from Ohio State and Local Education News. And Canton Repository reports that Crenshaw Middle School's Career Technical Edition could cost up to $3.15 million. A new building addition at Crenshaw Middle School is expected to cost roughly $3 million. The Canton City School Board approved an agreement Monday with Fred Oliveri Construction Company. The construction manager for the project that sets the maximum price for the building addition at $3.15 million. The addition to be located on the building's south side will be a multi-purpose space for career and technical classes, such as industrial arts and computer-assisted design. The project is expected to be completed before the start of the next school year. In Columbus, CBS 10 reported that Black History Month profile teacher and educator Kurt Russell History teacher Kurt Russell grew up in Oberlin, Ohio, and graduated from the Oberlin City Schools. He has spent his entire career teaching in his hometown. Beloved in his northern Ohio community, Russell was recently honored at the 2022 Ohio Teacher of the Year as the Ohio, um, forgive me. Never, never one to shy away from a challenge, Russell plans to turn this recognition into an opportunity to advocate for making sure all students see themselves reflected not only in their classrooms, but in the curriculum as well. Youngstown ABC 33 reports that Valley School to host COVID-19 vaccination clinic. Salem City Schools announced on Monday that they will host a COVID-19 vaccination clinic Friday, February 11th from 2 to 5 p.m. According to an announcement on the Salem City Schools website, the pop-up clinic will occur at the Salem High School Library. The clinic will provide Pfizer doses 1, 2, or the booster shot for the people ages 5 and up. People, please don't participate in this. Do not do this to your children. If you want to take your life into your own hands on taking these, these shots... That change your DNA. Please don't do it to your kids. They just please don't. Okay, don't put this poison in their bodies. All right, bear with me for a moment. The Norwalk Reflector reports that driver's education returns to eHub. That's E-H-O-V-E, -E, all capital letters. For the first time in decades, area students can prepare to become licensed drivers while pursuing a vocational education. EHUB Assistant Director Charlie Warth, 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 Warthling? I, let me try that again. Warthling. 
It's W-A-R-T-H-L-I-N-G. The supervisor of the class explained the vocational school offers the class today, and quote, he, we feel a driver's license is a necessity for successful employment, he said. With us being a career center, it makes sense to give our students every opportunity for successful employment. This is from the Associated Press, and it reports that New Mexico built to provide $45 million for school cyber defense. The New Mexico Legislature's House Education Committee has advanced a bill that would provide $45 million to hire cybersecurity specialists for the state and fund grants enabling school districts to strengthen their cybersecurity. The bill also would require that a cybersecurity office for schools be created within the public education department. Okay, just a moment. A lot of the stuff is repeats again, of course. This is from the Foundation Center, and it reports that UC Irvine receives $57.75 million for depression research treatment. The bequest from the estate of Audrey Steele Burnand excuse me, will help fund the creation of the Noel, Noel Drury MD Depression Research Center and support the UCI management Steele and Burnand Anza Borrego Desert Research Center. Montreal and I'm sorry, I'm switching topics now. Montreal Holocaust Museum announces gift for a new facility. The museum has received gifts of twenty million dollars and fifteen point seven million from the Minister de la Culture et des Communications Quebec. New Quebec, and, and um, oh, I'm reading that totally wrong. Let me try this again. Okay, so 20 million or 15.7 million, and 11.8 million from Israeli Foundation. Um, okay, Equity Alliance closes 28 million fund to invest in diverse VC firms. The Equity Alliance was established by Dick Parsons and Kenneth Lear in the wake of the murder of George Floyd in May of 2020 to help create a differentiated approach to building wealth for unrepresented investors and undeserved or underserved, excuse me, communities. All righty. And this is from Ohio State and Local News. It says, Dayton NBC2 reported Springboro man donates a 100-year-old violin to school. A Springboro resident donated a 100-year violin to the Springboro High School, uh, known as SHS, Strings Program. And SHS said Klein, 92, worked as an educator for his entire career at Franklin City Schools and Kettering City Schools. He was a member of the Ohio State University Marching Band, served as the marching band director for the OSU Alumni Band, and led many community and church bands and choruses throughout his career. And Education Week reports that a study is shows that teachers of color are tied to improved outcomes. Teachers of colors are linked to improved outcomes for all students, including academic achievement as well as social and emotional improvements. According to a study by David Blazier, 
um, assistant professor of education policy and economics at the University of Maryland. Maryland. The fun findings, goodness sakes, the findings are based on a study of fourth and fifth grade teachers in four school districts in East Coast, in the East on the East Coast. And Chalkbeat in Tennessee reported that the Tennessee high school to pilot AP African American studies. A high school in Memphis, Tennessee will pilot an advanced placement African American studies course beginning the upcoming school year. The pilot program will span two school years and officials hope to eventually expand to schools district wide. Okay, just a moment. We're running out of time here. Um, this is from K to 12 Dive, and it says Iowa bill would require teachers to live stream lesson, lessons. Proposals in some states are focused on monitoring teaches, teachers, including through live streaming classrooms and establishing tip lines to share concerns. <laughs> Under one bill in Iowa, cameras would be installed in all classrooms except, except special education and physical education. I wonder why that is. And lessons, lessons would be available for parents and guardians to view. There is so much there that I could just pick right on apart. So another way to track people, right, spying. And then why would they not be put in special education, physical education? Maybe because that's where a lot of the abuse takes place. Hmm. I wonder, right? Oh. All right. I think we're coming to an end here. We have a few more minutes. Let me see what I have. Um, I think I can share maybe one more. This is from our partner and affiliate, Homeschool Legal Defense. And it says, Bill seeks to help more families homeschool. During school choice week, dozens of homeschooling families showed up at the state hearing to support an important new bill sponsored by a homeschool mom. Among other improvements, the measure would align academic performance requirements for homeschoolers with those for other students. If you want to read this entire story that they did, it was written by Michael Donnelly, and it was published February 9, 2022. And let me see if I can get you the bill information. Not seeing the bill identifier, like the number for it, or um, maybe I'm missing it. More analysis of the bill. There's like a separate link. Let me see what this bill's titled, so you can look it up for yourself. Um, well, there's a lot of bills actually. Maybe I should cover more of this next time. Um, Yeah, lots of lots of bills. Okay, I'm going to just share more of this the next time because we don't have time for all of it. But um, yeah, it looks pretty interesting. So thank you for joining me for another Education in the News episode. And I want to remind you that on Fridays we have on the Young Tibet's show on um, issues that face youth and then on Sundays we have a civil rights show and Barbara Bolin is the host of that so please check in both days um, well Friday's show is will always be posted by 6 p.m. Sundays is by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and then of course my show airs every Wednesday by 6 p.m. until next time 
We hope you enjoyed today's show. Don't forget to rate us and follow us on your podcast player. Check out our show page, radio.newheightseducation.org, for monthly announcements and other happenings.